Alright guys, this is Andrew, and today I've been thinking that I haven't done like a hero related tips and tricks video for quite some time, so I guess today is the day guys. Today in Overwatch I'll be showing you a handful of neat tips that you may not know about, so perhaps there'll be a few things here and there they may pick up from this video that'll be beneficial to you. Some of you may find a few or all these tips super obvious, but please bear in mind that not everyone is as knowledgeable and awesome as you. So <laughs> with that out of the way, before we get too into it, I want to give a quick shout out to my buddy Terrius for helping me come up with some of these tips. He does a lot of very, very useful Overwatch related content over at his YouTube channel. So be sure to check out his channel down in the description. So just to kind of clarify guys, I'm not going to go through every hero and I'm just going to do like maybe one or two tips for the heroes that I selected to be part of this video. And uh, starting us off, let's start with Reaper. Now a handy way to maximize your downtime and be able to kind of turn a fight quickly in your favor would be to reload right before you Wraith form. Now this way when you come out, you have a set of guns ready to go, it will refill your ammo. Uh, this is incredibly useful for those one vs one skirmishes when you need to kind of reset the fight by Wraith forming away, maybe grab a health pack, maybe just kind of turn around a corner, as it allows you to be up and ready immediately when you come back out of the invulnerabilities. Now the next tip would be about Junk Rat. We'll be talking about the legendary double concussion nade boost jump. That's a really long name. But all you gotta do guys is to set down a concussion mine and stand over it as usual and then wait for the cooldown of the first mine to go down. Now once that is done, you wanna blow it and as you would normally do in a boost jump, you know, it's pretty standard stuff, but afterwards you can blast it again mid-air. So be sure you look directly below yourself when you wanna do the second concussion nade to get that extra boost. Next up, let's talk about Tracer and Gibraltar. Now there's a way to flank around the entire defending team when you close in towards the last objective, and I know you can do with a few different heroes, but today I want to show you guys how to do it with Tracer as I feel like she's a hero that can really kind of get the most out of this flank. All you gotta do is come to this area near the health pack and time your triple blinks until you get to this back area. Now the, the timing is pretty tricky and it will take some practice, but I like to execute it from this ledge over here. It kind of gives you some, some elevation. Um, then you hop off, and at the apex of your hop, time your three blinks so that you can land on the other side. Pretty handy tip to kind of get around the entire enemy team, especially as Tracer, who is built to flank. Now you can also do something cheeky like this on King's Row by flying underneath the opening uh, right around here. So it works with Genji and I think it also works with Widowmaker, but I found that since D.Va's ult has been buffed, it's it's got some pretty awesome potential for uh, for a good old flank into a self-destruct ultimate for D.Va. So it's it's pretty amazing to kind of put a ultimate there. Um, you can also fly back, you know, if you're in the opposite side, you can also fly back underneath this little hole. Um, just be sure not to fall too far or else you will uh, just inevitably die due to the uh, falling out of the map. So. Yeah, pretty pretty uh, interesting maneuvers here. Next tip I want to talk about would be for Reinhardt. So we all know he's got some amazing melee capabilities. His hammer's got like a stunningly huge, massive, thick hitbox. But um, did you guys know you can actually animation cancel his swing if you pull up your shield? So chances are, this is more of a situational thing, but um, doing this is pretty handy if you want to like hit someone and then quickly shield for any counter attacks. So, uh, pretty cool little tip there. Now, speaking of Reinhardt, let's talk about Zarya and this cool little trick you guys can do if you have a ally Reinhardt. So, we all know that casting a barrier on a target as Zarya will absorb the damage and convert it to uh, your own damage. However, if you have a Reinhardt that is moving forward, you know, in a situation where you're trying to push through a choke point, what you can do is cast a barrier on them and part of that barrier will clip through Reinhardt's shield giving you some easy charge during those pushes. Now, some of you guys may be sitting there thinking, all right, well, I want some tips for some support heroes. All right, so let's talk about Mercy. Mercy is someone who, you know, I originally didn't like that much, but since playing more of Overwatch, I've begun to really appreciate all her nuances. And one of those cool little nuances is that you can actually cancel your Guardian Angel mid-glide by tapping the button again. So it's super handy for kind of stopping yourself when you fly into a bad situation. Um, it's, it really gives Mercy another dimension of maneuverability. 
Uh, another funny thing, though, arguably less useful, is that you can also melee while you have your healing staff out. I, I don't see the purpose in this, but uh, maybe it's just something cool to kind of mention out there. Another tip for you guys regarding a support character, um, let's talk about Lucio. So one thing I see a lot of Lucios do, myself included guys, I still have a bad habit of doing this, but um, when you use your ultimate, right, it casts a giant shield on all your allies, yourself included, that eats a shit ton of damage. When you do this, and when I do this, I made this mistake too, uh, is to make sure you don't have your crossfade on healing, because obviously everyone would have a freaking giant ass shield over them, eating up all the incoming damage, and kind of healing while the shield is on them doesn't really make too much sense because it's not really topping off their actual HP. So what you want to do instead is to switch to your speed boost, giving everyone that super tankiness and the extra speed from Lucio, really maximizing that benefit. Now once the damage starts cutting into actual HP, that's when you want to switch over to healing and then do the amp and that way you can really juice the maximum potential the synergy between all of Lucio's abilities. Now the last tip involves Genji and Winston. Now the cool thing about these two is that both of their ultimates will reset their respective movement abilities. So if you find yourself falling off an edge as Genji or Winston and your leap slash swift strike is on cooldown, know that if you have your ultimate up and if it's worth using, you can quickly cast it to reset the cooldown of your leap or your swift strike to get it to get back into the fight. So another interesting usage you can do for this, especially for Genji, this is more of like a Genji specific tip. Um, some of you guys may know this, but for those who don't, is that when you have your ultimate, you can swift strike through a bunch of enemies cast your Dragon Blade, slash a few times, and the Squish Strike again. Now the added 100 damage from the two Squish Strikes is usually enough to kill the squishier 200 HP heroes right off the bat, giving you another Swift Strike to work with. So just kind of a random bonus tip in there for you guys, I guess. Now guys, that's just about it for today. Uh, as far as tips goes, I got a handful more in the works, so if you would like more of these, be sure to hit that like button and let me know down in the comments for any sort of special requests or if you have any tips of your own. Of course, there'll be always some people out there who'll be like, Andrew, I already knew all these within the first day, no, first five minutes of playing Overwatch. This is a useless video. But, you know, for those who can actually see that there are other people in the world who may not hold your own experiences, let me know down in the comments if there are any tips that you know of that may be useful for the next video. And finally guys, I want to leave you with a tip from Terith himself from one of his videos, just a kind of short clip for you guys. Hey guys, welcome to another Top 5 Tech, this time featuring Ana. Let's get right into it. Number 1. There are a few ways to be more effective in 1v1 combat as Ana. For one, whenever you're thinking about grenading the opponent, consider running up and hitting both of you for more value. Second, the best combo out of Sleep Dart is to primary fire into melee into grenade. This does 165 damage and the execution is instantaneous. Do not primary fire into grenade into melee, the grenade makes you wait to melee. And yeah, if you guys want to see more of content like this, be sure to check out his channel because he is uh, he's someone who really specializes in this type of material. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out his channel and you guys will not be disappointed. Anyways guys, I think that's just about it for today. Was there anything else I want to say? Probably not. <laughs> I guess until uh, the next video guys, I'll see you around.